Welcome to another Table Talk. I'm Israel Anderson. Now, in the last episode, we were looking at the tester, and we want to know, uh, is the tester the same person in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Did you realize that there's a tester in both the Old Testament and the New Testament? Yahweh is testing the Hebrews. He says he's doing this. Um, and then we see this story about the tempter or the temptation um, in Matthew and Luke chapter 4. And it's almost like no one has noticed before that all of the things that Jesus has put through mirrors what happened with Yahweh and the Hebrews. Well, that's interesting. And there's some other anomalies like, well, how did the devil end up with all of Yahweh's kingdoms in order to be able to offer them back to Jesus, who Christians are now saying is Yahweh, which they'd make up their mind on who he is. But of course, they can't because the Bible doesn't say one way or the other, because neither answer is true. So let's now start to look at what Jesus had to say uh, about Yahweh. And again, there's nothing exhaustive here, but there's enough here, there's quite a bit here, that people are going to go, wow, I had no idea the Bible identified Yahweh as Satan the adversary so many times, and especially from Jesus' own lips, okay? So Luke 4, of course, we've just covered that, um, and that's above. Let's get on to Luke 11. Now, this is interesting, and this is one that uh, I have found. And as far as we can tell, no one in 2,000 years has ever noticed all of this here in Luke 11, verses 1 through 13, okay, where Jesus says, Me and my father won't treat you like Yahweh the tester, the evil one, did. All right, so there's a three-part discourse here. Starts off with the Lord's Prayer. Every word of this prayer refers to the Exodus, and the prayer ends asking for protection from the tester, whom Jesus calls the evil one. All right? Jesus teaches his disciples that he and his father will reward desperate people for asking for food instead of murdering them as Yahweh did. Uh, Jesus teaches his disciples that he and his father won't murder them with poisonous snakes instead of fish, as Yahweh did. <laughs> I'm not going to poison them with poisonous fish, but I'll need to rewrite that so it's a little more clear. But, <clears throat> but this part about the poisonous snakes has been noticed by many people over the years. And it was that when I was reading it, I think December of 2023, and I went, you know what? I need to go and look into that a little more. And we've talked about it. People know that it's there, but we didn't realize that what we're dealing with here is this full three-part continuous discourse where Jesus is eviscerating Yahweh and making it plain to his inner circle disciples that he and his father are not Yahweh and will not treat them as Yahweh treated their ancestors. Okay, we already have a video on this. You can search for it on my channel. Uh, just search for Luke and you'll see it pop up there. You're looking for Luke 11, 1 through 13. This is a very powerful passage and it's a powerful thing that has occurred here where after almost 2,000 years of scholarship diving into the text, no one, as far as we can tell, has ever noticed that this whole passage, 13 verses long, is one large discourse where Jesus is addressing Yahweh and his treatment of the Hebrews during the Exodus. That's Luke 11. That's a really big deal. John 1. <clears throat> Some of these, you know, I could elaborate. I might do another video and really get into these in, in depth. Uh, we just want to keep things casual here. You can go and look up these references for yourself. So we'll kind of breeze through some of these. But um, these are not from Jesus, but they're in the Gospel of John. And we see here that the, the author of the Gospel of John says that Yahweh's law 
came through Moses, not Jesus, and then says that truth and grace, grace and truth, came from Jesus, right? So grace, unmerited favor, the complete opposite of Yahweh. The next verse is also very interesting, verse 17, or verse 18, sorry, where it says, no one has seen God at any time. But people hung out with Yahweh and drank with him and sat down with him and had conversations with him uh, as men. And I have a whole study on that called Yahweh, the physical God. Christianity teaches that that never happened. And as long as Christians continue to ignore their Bible, they'll continue falling for Christianity's lies and deceptions like that. Yahweh is noted in the Bible as a physical being, a physical person, over and over and over again. And Christianity's like, shh, we, we, don't, we don't look at those verses. Yeah. We don't look at much at all. John 6, <clears throat> Jesus says, Yahweh did not give Moses true bread from heaven. And this is one of those really slap you in the face instances here. Um, Exodus 16, Yahweh tells Moses he is giving him bread from heaven. He's very explicit about it. He's very proud of it. I'm giving you bread from heaven. Okay. Jesus, in John 6, 32, the disciples, it wasn't the disciples, it was a, a, a group of religious people had come to Jesus and they were peppering him with questions. And they said to him, well, uh, what sign will you give us? Because, you know, Moses gave us manna from heaven as a sign from God. And Jesus then says, no, no, he didn't. Moses didn't give you true bread from heaven. Now, if Yahweh was Jesus or Yahweh was Jesus' father, well, you don't talk like that. You don't cast shade on someone that you love or yourself, Yahweh specifically told Moses, I'm giving you bread from heaven. Okay. And Jesus says, no, he didn't. Interesting. Okay. John 8. Well, <laughs> I'm doing a whole study on John 8 right now um, because there are people that love to use John 8:58 as some kind of evidence, the I am passage, that Yahweh is Jesus. Okay, okay. Do you see how much evidence I'm showing you? You're going to have to come up with a lot more than some vague, ambiguous text like that when I'm showing you really explicit things like this one. Okay? So John 8, the lying murderer from the beginning. Jesus describes the devil describes the devil as a lying murderer from the beginning, from the Genesis. Yahweh is the only individual that fits this description. Now, there are other parts of John 8, and every time I talk about John 8, 44, uh, people want to try to say that he's talking about some other thing. And I've heard so many different opinions on this because they're all wrong. I have a video on John 8, 44 where we go through, we take it in context, we go way back before verse 44, and we look at the whole conversation leading up to verse 44 so that we understand exactly who Jesus is talking about when he says to the Jews, your God, your father, is the devil. Because, of course, that's anathema to the Christian who goes, no, that's not right. Well, Jesus said it, but <clears throat> when you're a Christian, you're trained to be a Christian, not a follower of Jesus. And when Jesus says something that contradicts Christianity, you prefer Christianity over Jesus. And I used to be like that too. But some time ago, I decided I can't be like that anymore because I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm not a follower of Christianity. I am not a Christian. I follow him, right? So if he says something, it's gospel, right? What Jesus said is gospel. Everything else is commentary. So when you go to John 8, 44, and you look at that passage, well, you can argue to the cows come home about who Jesus is referring to when he says, 
your God, your father is the devil. But in that very same verse, it's a very long verse, verse 44. In that very same verse, he goes on and provides this description of the devil, a lying murderer from the Genesis. There's only one lying murderer from the Genesis in the entirety of the Bible. So what do we do with that? So everybody likes to skip that. I talk about it in my video and people still leave comments trying to argue over the identity of the person that Jesus is talking about calling the devil, but he describes the devil and they all omit the description. You can't omit the description. The description is there to provide the essential context. Just in case somebody does what the Christian does today and tries to argue that, no, Jesus wasn't talking about Yahweh. Okay, well then who's the lying murderer from the Genesis? There's only one. Who's the biggest liar in the whole Bible? Well, he went to the Hebrews and told them, we're going to take you to a promised land like three weeks away and 40 years of death and destruction in the desert. That's a lie. That's a big lie. Okay, it's also an oath gave them an oath. He was going, I'm going to take you to a promised land. Or we'll get to oaths here in a second. Who's the biggest murderer in the Bible? <laughs> that goes without even answering, doesn't it? John 10. Jesus describes Yahweh as the bad shepherd. So we've got this whole discourse here. I think it's like 21 verses long, where Jesus is talking about the bad shepherd and the good shepherd. But let's look at a, a couple of verses here, John 10, 8 and John 10, 10. In John 10, 8, Jesus says, all the shepherds that came before me were thieves and robbers. By the way, this word all, <laughs> I looked this up in the Greek just to see, you know, what does this word actually mean? You know, people are always doing this. Well, let's, did you know that it actually means this? Translators don't usually screw up. And, and, unless it comes to a name or a title. <laughs> um, but anyway, I looked up the word all in the Greek, and you know what it means? All. <laughs> okay? So all of the shepherds that came before me were thieves and robbers. Yahweh, did he come before Jesus? Yes. Okay? Well, no, he is Jesus. Okay, we'll see everything, all the other evidence we've already given you. We know that's not true. Uh, what does this great thief like, what's his modus operandi? How would we identify him? What does he do? What's his nature and character? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> this description only fits Yahweh. There's no other individual in the entirety of the Bible that fits this description. That's funny. Gen, I mean, uh, John 8, 44, the lying murderer from the beginning. Uh, two chapters later, uh, <laughs> The thief that came before me that came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah, that's the bad shepherd. There's so much evidence. There's just so much evidence. Matthew 5, what have we got here? Jesus says, oath-making is from the evil one. Oath-making is from the evil one, right? Who is the great oath-maker of the Bible? Yahweh. Okay. Jesus says, oaths come from the evil one. This is where he's talking about, let your yes be yes, your no be no, right? Anything more than that is from the evil one, the evil one. Okay, who's the greatest oath maker in the whole Bible? Yahweh, the evil one. All right. Um, Revelation 13, the beast of the New Testament is Yahweh from Hosea. Let's, I could do this. Uh, the beast of... Um, Revelation 13 uh, is Yahweh from Hosea 13. What? Now, this is one of these ones that um, was discovered some time ago. One of our first ones we ever talked about. Jesus describes the beast, the ruler of the world, by quoting Yahweh's own self-description. This one is really profound. So let's take a look here. <clears throat> now, I actually quoted the text here. So I thought it was important enough that we quote the text. But you, you need to go look it up, okay? You don't just take my word for it. So Revelation 13, 2 says, Now the beast that I saw was like a leopard, but its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. So we've got a beast 
like a leopard and a lion and a bear. Beast, lion, leopard, bear. Okay, beast, lion, leopard, bear. Here's Yahweh in Hosea 13, who is telling the Hebrews that if you don't suck up to me, if you don't bow down and worship me and do everything I say, I'm going to utterly destroy you. And he describes himself like this. So I will pounce on them like a lion. Like a leopard, I will lurk by the path. I will attack them like a bear robbed of her cubs. I will rip open their chests. I will devour them there like a lion, like a wild beast would tear them apart. Now, here's where this gets even more interesting. I put in the note here. Read both chapters in entirety and compare Yahweh to the beast. They are clearly the same person. So, read Revelation 13. This is the way I recommend you do it. Just read Rev. Don't look at Hosea 13 for a bit. Just read through Revelation 13. Get an understanding of what's going on, okay, from the whole chapter, what this beast does, so that you really have an idea of the nature and the character of this beast, right, this ruler, that is going to rule the whole world. Everything it does, it's it's just it's it's intrinsic nature. Once you've kind of you know read over this for I don't know five ten minutes, you kind of have some grasp of what what is there in the whole chapter. Turn to Hosea thirteen, and then look at how Yahweh describes Himself. They're the same person. I mean, it's inescapable. Now, I've had some people say, oh, you're taking this literally, but it's all meant to be taken metaphorically. I'm not taking it literally or metaphorically. It doesn't matter one way or the other. Well, we could be ultra-literalists, or we could be more like the Christian Gnostic, um, and all Christians are Gnostics because they do this with everything, and say, it's not literal, it's all metaphor. Okay, and? It doesn't change anything at all. The point here is that in Hosea 13, Yahweh himself provides this incredibly in-depth description of himself ruling over the Hebrews. And what happens if you don't submit to him? Okay. And then Jesus, giving his revelation to John, describes this beast that in the end times, will rule the whole world. And it's the same description. Jesus literally quotes Yahweh from Hosea 13 in Revelation 13. This is one of the most powerful, most slam dunk examples of Yahweh being Satan, the adversary that we can find anywhere. He is the ruler of the world, the God of this world. He's the end time beast. Okay, so we've looked at a whole bunch today. We've gone 18 minutes here. Uh, I knew this would be a little bit long today, and yet <laughs> there's hardly anything here, right? There's nothing about the garden. There's, there's just, I might add to this over time. I think I might update this study once a year or something, um, once every couple of years. But once this is done here within a week, you'll have a solid video where we, we can, you can give it to somebody and they can go through this and see all of these references, right? Because all of the references are here, right? So they can go through, even though we didn't read them out, um, you can go through and look all of these things up. And th that's what we want, right? We want people opening their Bibles, right? <laughs> you blow off the dust and open that thing up, please got to read it, okay? And be careful if you're reading the Old Testament, as Paul said. If you read the Old Testament, you will have a veil pulled over your eyes, and only Jesus can remove that veil, okay? That's important. You make sure that you pray and ask for covering before you dive in to study the Old Testament, all right? Really important. So we will come back on the next episode and we will get into some of the things that Yahweh has, has to say 
about himself and, and other parts that are in the text on Yahweh. There's so much more to go through. So all of these people that are like, Where's the evidence? Yeah, I don't know. Where's the evidence, man? I mean, there's just, there's, there's, there's not a lot of evidence here, right? There's way more evidence that Yahweh is Satan's adversary than he is of being Jesus or Jesus' father. That's all there is to it. Thank you so much to all of my Founders Club members. I am never going to be popular on social media, so I'm not going to be able to make any money that way. So these people that support me 25 or more a month, thank you so much. It really means the world to me because I get to do this and share these resources with everybody. Tools. I love to create tools. You've got God's iPod.com. Um, if you haven't been there, you can get that plugged into your phone so you can listen to the Bible in audio. Go to the section on Jesus and listen to the Gospels and Revelation over and over and over again. Um, the five questions, you'll find that flyer that I post around on social media pretty often. Uh, you can ask me for it. Uh, have those five questions. What did Jesus say about himself, his father, what he came to do, where he came from, what will soon take place? Those five questions will unlock the Gospels for you and your knowledge of Jesus will just simply explode. And you notice that as a teacher, I'm trying to get you to go back to the Bible. I want you to go and read it for yourself. Um, it's, you know, I listen to some others out there and it's almost like they don't want you to go and look at the Bible because, I don't know, you might see something you're not supposed to see. You might notice that the tester in the Old Testament happens to be the exact same person testing Jesus in the New Testament that was testing the Hebrews in the Old Testament. And we couldn't have that now, could we? If you start to really read the Bible, you'll start to see a lot of these things that I'm talking about. Sure, you need someone that is experienced, like the story of Philip and the eunuch, and the eunuch didn't understand what he was reading, and uh, Philip jumped up into the, the carriage with him and helped explain the text to him. Sure. There's a, there's a role for teachers, but it doesn't mean that you get to, you know, put aside your own responsibility for opening the Bible or listening to the Bible in audio for yourself, okay? Nothing will ever replace that. Uh, it's just, I wouldn't say it's the ultimate. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate. It's like getting that matrix <laughs> download, uh, but... Uh, you got to you got to get into the Bible. Open your Bible. Blow the dust off. All right. Thank you so much for uh, your attention today. We will continue on this. The Bible on Yahweh. What does the Bible have to say about Yahweh? A lot of things that most people are not aware of at all. Hopefully you learned something today. You don't have to share this video because it's one of our casual table talks, but if you want to, go ahead. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.